Welcome back friends. In this video, I'm going to walk you through one possible approach in which you can prepare for CCA 175 Hadoop and Spark developer certification. CCA 175 certification requirement can sound overwhelming, especially if you're new to the big data world. However, with proper planning, this journey can be made very easy. Let's try to gain some familiarity with the exam itself before we jump into further details. You can always find this blog at my blog website, which is Arun teaches you tech blogspot.com. And uh, you can uh, leave your comments in case you have any questions after this. So the first step is to understand how the exam is conducted and the format of the exam. The format of the exam is hands on where you will be given nine to 10 problems to solve in two hours time. During the time, you will have access to the API and some official documentation. You will be provided a cluster with all required technologies pre-installed. You need to accomplish the required goals in order to solve the exam questions within two hour window. So remember, it's a two hour exam, a hands-on exam on a Cloudera cluster. Now passing score based on Cloudera's website is 70% and how Cloudera does the scoring is unknown. Hence, I recommend that you equip yourself in all the technologies mentioned in this web page so that you can increase your chances of clearing the certification exam by attempting to solve all of your questions. Now, the next important aspect of the planning is to identify what to learn. This whole big data can be overwhelming, but if you divide and conquer, you can understand what skills to be equipped with in order to clear the exam. For this, I have copied the skill set expectations from Cloudera's website and mapped them to required technologies that you need to learn based on my experience. Now, this table provides the mapping between skill and the technology to use. So this part is what, you know, the skills description part was copied from the Cloudera website and I supplied the content in a different color here which gives you an idea of what technologies to learn. Once again, do not get overwhelmed. These technologies are supposed to make your life easy and, and hence should not be hard to master. To excel in the big data world, one needs to shift their orientation from writing single node processing code to writing code that processes data on multiple nodes and then aggregates the processed data to provide the final result. Now this brings in different perspective and different challenges, but Hadoop and the ecosystem of Hadoop take away majority of the complexity, leaving you with easy to use APIs and tools to accomplish the same distributed processing. Another important shift in thinking is change from schema on write model, which you are used to when you're dealing with RDBMS and OLTPs and data warehouses, um, to a schema on read model of data storage, which offers extraordinary flexibility in evolving structured data. Now, let's try to see each of these technology sets and let me provide you a very brief introduction about this. I obviously cannot teach you all of these technologies in this short video, but let me give you a kickstart into the Hadoop world and help you associate some small description with each of these technologies that I have mentioned in the table. Okay, now at the core of Hadoop is a purpose-built distributed clustered data storage mechanism called Hadoop Distributed File System. It offers a way to store large files across multiple machines. Now, HDFS is the backbone for the entire Hadoop ecosystem because HDFS offers you reliable and highly available clustered model where you can save data and prep the data in such, such that this distributed processing can be possible, okay? The next technology that you need to learn is Scoop. Now it's a framework for bulk data transfer between HDFS and structured data sources. Now, quite often you may be having data available in an RDBMS, but processing that data might be time consuming and resource consuming. In that case, 
quite often scoop is used to pull the data from your existing rdbms into this distributed file system called as hdfs so that it can be used for further processing the next technology is spark now spark is a data analyst data analytics cluster computing framework which means it has a bunch of apis and it fits into the glove as uh, into the into hadoop as if your hand is fitting into the glove okay now to its credit spark provides an easier to use alternative to hadoop's map reduce and offers performance up to 10 times faster than previous generation systems like hadoop map reduce itself now spark is a framework for writing fast distributed programs spark solves similar problems as hadoop but uh, at a very fast pace because it uses an in-memory in approach for the certification exam so remember for the certification exam the expectation that is you learn and you understand spark very well the exam is not going to question you on map reduce or anything related to map reduce of course um, i should take back that statement because you can run a spark program on yarn which is a cluster management kind of a framework um, purposely built for hdfs again the next part is spark rdd now rdd stands for resilient distributed data sets it's a fundamental data structure of spark it is an immutable distributed collection of objects now each data set in rdd is divided into logical partitions and each partition is processed on a different node isn't that distributed processing where you take a huge data set divide that into pieces take those pieces into different nodes and apply your code to process data on each of these nodes so that you you leverage the computational capacity of several nodes within the cluster now obviously this is an introduction if you are not following i would still recommend that you go through the entire video so that you can associate some of these terms in the core definitions with the learning that you are going to have in the next few days um, through some YouTube videos, Udemy, or any other structured or, un or unstructured course material. The next part is called Spark Data Frame. Now, this is an extension to RDD. It is built over an RDD. That this is nothing but an encapsulation, which gives encapsulation around your data on the HDFS itself, which is organized into named columns, which will give you a feeling that you're working on a columned database it's just the feeling so that you can perform some operations with more authority and clarity but the underlying data is either structured or unstructured or or structured but evolving in nature okay spark streaming now spark streaming is an extension of score core spark api you know this this enables scalable high throughput fault tolerant stream processing of live data streams now imagine a use case where uh, you are writing code to find out the highest trending sentiment of the presidential candidate in united states election you cannot be taking the data storing it into a data warehouse and then running your analysis you will be way behind your competition if you attempt to do anything like that you would like to do this analysis on the fly when the data is entering from twitter or from facebook or any other social website where people are free to log in and post their comments you can take all of that unstructured data structure it in the format that you need and derive some meaningful insights at runtime this is what spark streaming provides you in a neatly available api library where all of your complexity is abstracted now spark sql is a sql like module which is built over spark and you can do um, Sorry for the small interruption, folks. I had to do some gimmicks with uh, the screen recording software I'm using currently. Now, Spark SQL is a Spark, Spark module for structured data processing. Now, unlike the basic data frame API, using Spark SQL, you can actually write SQL-like queries on distributed data sets that are available on the HDFS file system. 
Then you have Spark Submit, which is a mechanism to submit Spark code as applications and configure those applications by giving some additional parameters to optimize the execution of your Spark code. Flume is um, a, again a distributed reliable available service for efficiently collecting aggregating near real time or real time data especially data like log files data like um, you know you can also capture data from twitter handles like a lot of things that you can do in real time it is very close to spark streaming but spark streaming offers more flexibility in terms of writing code whereas flume um, also does but uh, in a slightly different way which may not be suitable in a more scalable approach when the nodes of your cluster are changing rapidly now then you have hive hive is a meta store which means it creates a table like structure which links to the hdfs file in the background and uh, provides you flexibility to write sql queries um, so you need to learn a little bit of hive because if you look at the cloudera's skill specifications for cca 175 one of the skills is to treat a meta store table as a source and a sink now the next part is impala impala is cloudera's very own hive like interface but uses its own engine instead of relying on spark or MapReduce. and cloudera claims that impala is much much faster than using hives in order to do data analytics now that we understood uh, what technologies to learn let's try to draw a plan i have created a small plan for you so that you can follow this and successfully clear your exam i'm assuming average skill set and average intelligence level from a person who's preparing for the exam now this plan requires you to spend two hours a day for six weeks and spending five to six days a week now um, i'm not providing you videos for understanding each of these technologies i may do that i may not do that but my goal is to fulfill item 16 i'm going to provide you scenarios like as you can see uh, i've already created problem one and problem two i'm going to create more problems and more material which can assist as a catalyst in your preparation and i expect that you equip yourself in items 1 to 14 by referring to youtube videos or udemy or whatever source of uh, learning that you want to do and come back when you hit number 15 you know because number 15 is about scenarios and i'm going to create some mock scenarios for each of these problems so that you can use those mock scenarios solve them to 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 test your skills and ability before appearing for the actual exam this will build immense amount of confidence during your preparation okay now with this i would like to close this video and uh, i hope you i hope this particular i'm sorry i'm getting distracted but i hope this particular schedule helps you in preparing for the cca 175 exam and makes you successfully certified welcome to the big data world and good luck with your preparation bye and see you shortly after your preparation when you come back to view more of my videos about each of the problem scenario i'm posting here on my website once again remember arun teaches you tech blogspot.com this is not a tutorial but an aid in assisting you to become cca 175 cloudera certified hadoop and spark developer thank you bye